Hey everyone, welcome back. My name's Patrick, and if you are new to our channel, we have been RVing now for going on about 20 years, and this is our 11th RV. We're planning on moving into and going full-time next summer. We set it up so that we can go without power for who knows how long. So we actually had installed the Victron Multi Plus 3000. We have our Lynx distribution system there. You can also see we have the Victron uh, solar charge controller, but this is all hooked into these brand new 300 amp hour Epoch batteries. Now, we installed these about a month ago. You may have saw that video. I'll link it at the end of this video. And we have been running these now for about a month. I have, on occasion, turned the power off because I wanted to see how they do, but I thought, you know what, let's make a video where I will show you exactly how these things perform. But I never went more than maybe eight hours, so we're gonna go a full 24 hours on these batteries, and we'll see exactly how they do. It is mid-October here in Indiana, which means we're probably not gonna be running the AC today. And I know a lot of people install a system like ours so they can run their AC. I will tell you over the last month, when I have shut the power off, it was to test out, could we run our AC? And the truth is, yeah, we can, no problem whatsoever. We did put Coleman Mach soft starts on both of our ACs. It's performed well. Now you may be thinking, hey, if you're not running the AC today, is it really that much of a test? And the answer is yes, because quite frankly, it frosted here last night, it's cold, and we run things like our electric fireplace that puts off heat, and that can be as big of a draw as the AC. Let's take a look and see exactly how we are doing. Now, the batteries were at 98% when I went out to shut the power off. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull up my Epoch app. And that's one of the things I love about these Epoch batteries is I can actually just Bluetooth right to them and I can see what each battery is doing. The other nice thing is I can actually see what each cell is doing. So it looks like we've already lost 4%. So where is that 4% going? Well, let's go ahead and log into Victron. And we have the Serbo on the Victron. Um, that's an add-on device that we put on which allows me to track, but more importantly, it allows Myron from Lancer RV who installed my system, it allows him to log in from wherever he's at and he can see exactly what's going on with our system. That way if we're traveling and we have issues, he's told me that he'll be able to log in and uh, make changes, that type of thing. So we're going to go ahead and take a look here. All right, I just remembered that our internet connection, we don't currently have. Long story short, my aunt and uncle from Texas are visiting, so I took our Starlink down to their site so that they would have internet during their stay, and we're actually running off of a, uh, our neighbor, Kevin and Angie, who own the park here. We're running off of their Starlink, and our system's hooked up to ours. Long story, let's just go out here and we'll take a look back here because we have not installed our servo display inside yet. Um, we were still trying to figure out where we want to put that. So. Let's see what's going on. All right, here we go. And let's see what it's saying. Yeah, we're consuming, it looks like, 1500 right now. So that's the equivalent of running an AC, and that's with that fireplace going. This is really gonna give us more like if we were running the AC right now. And in fact, I'm not even sure the AC pulls that much once it sets in. So we'll probably have to shut that fireplace off at some point today, but this is gonna at least give a good draw for the batteries, just like if it was really hot out and we were running the AC. But the thing is, we're gonna be using other things throughout today and tonight. Like we use our microwave. We use our toaster oven. And I will tell you, anything with a heating element will really put a strain on your batteries. I think this is going to be a good test, even though it's chilly out. And the thing is, I don't have to run the little fireplace as a heater because we have a furnace in here that runs off of propane. And so we can still have heat in the winter months and not have to worry about draining our batteries trying to stay warm. Now, I still kind of want to have the ambiance of the fireplace on this morning because I got some work to do. I'm just going to adjust the heat to the point that it'll shut off the heating element and that's going to help us save some battery and we're just going to run off the furnace. It is 11 o'clock and I was just checking our batteries. I'll pop it up on the screen here. Um, it looks like we're at about 82, 81 percent 
Um, the batteries are reading 80%, so a little discrepancy there, but I would trust the reading from the actual batteries more than I would um, what the Victron's saying, but it's close. So you can see we're starting to get some sun. It's, it's cleared up here this morning, but with the angle of the sun and the trees behind us, you just saw uh, hopefully on the screen here, we're not getting much. So we'll start getting some better sun today, I think. We'll put some of that back in. I ended up shutting the little electric fireplace off. Um, and so that we're really just not drawing that much. I had the TV on. We have the inverter running, obviously, which runs all the time. So there's some draw on that. And then, you know, your normal 12 volt stuff. And speaking of that, the question always comes up, do I need the setup you have? And the truth is I can't really answer that question because everybody camps differently. And so you may be fine with just having a single battery on your RV because if you're always plugged into shore power, you don't need things like inverters and solar and, and that type of thing. On the other hand, if you're like us and when you're traveling, you like to go to Cracker Barrels for overnight stops or Walmarts, or maybe you're doing some harvest hosting, or maybe you're going out on BLM land, then that's where maybe it makes sense to have solar and an inverter and, uh, you know, and lithium batteries. So I can't answer the question for you. You have to decide what you actually need for your actual camping setup. Personally, even if I wasn't going to be going off grid and I didn't need the inverter, I would personally still go with a lithium battery in my RV, even if I'm plugged in all the time. And the reason for that is, lead acid batteries number one you can only run them down to 50 percent so if for some reason your power goes out you know you're worried you weaken that battery things like that and then the other thing is they do need to maintain you know, constantly checking the water levels things like that where with the lithium batteries they're basically maintenance free they're a sealed unit and um yeah i just like them because they're easy to take care of they're also lighter weight than the traditional agms and lead acid batteries so there's a lot of benefits now understand like the these Epoch batteries, even the lie times we had, the Battleborns, they come in different sizes. So if you're saying, Patrick, I don't need a 300 amp hour battery, but you do want to go to lithium, don't worry. Epoch makes 100 amp hour batteries. If you only need 100 amp hours, you can find those. So don't think that you have to have this massive amount of amp hours on board if it doesn't fit your camping style. All right, I've got some errands to run. We're going to go out for a while, come back and we'll see where we're at. My guess is we're not gonna lose a lot here for the next few hours, cause I'm not gonna be around and there's really not gonna be a whole lot of draw. I still have the fireplace on, I'm gonna shut that off. I did turn the heat down so it won't cook on. We do leave the TV on when we're gone for Truman and Bess, our Cavalier King Charles Spaniels, and that is a 110 TV. So there'll be some draw there and a couple lights, but beyond that, we shouldn't see a huge drop in the next few hours. Well, it's almost five o'clock. I just got back. Now I'd stopped by earlier today and we were getting some pretty good sun. I think we were around, I took a screenshot, I'll pop it up here. Um, but now, and I'll go ahead and pop up the screenshot from where I just checked is we're still at like 77% on our batteries, which is pretty darn good. It means we still have three quarters of our battery life left. And that was with me running an electric heater this morning. So we'll see how it does this evening. Now this evening, I anticipate we're gonna to need to use some power. Um, we'll probably be watching TV. We'll probably use the microwave for dinner. And then the real test will not necessarily be overnight because the furnace is propane and use a little bit with the uh, fan. Um, but in the morning, it's gonna get hit hard because I like to make coffee. Patty likes to use her hair dryer. Oh, and if I didn't mention it, we have 320 watts of solar on the roof. It's the panel that came with the RV when we bought it. I still need to add another panel because we don't have near enough panels up there for that 600 amp hours of lithium that we use. So just keep in mind, we didn't get near the solar today that we would if we get that second panel up there, which should double us up to about 600 watts. So we'll be working on that project a little bit later this year um, and get that taken care of. And then that will change how much we're putting back in. All right, we need to defrost. see how this affects the batteries oh and when we get done I'm also gonna use the toaster oven so definitely gonna get some usage all right air fryer is gonna cook for six minutes then we'll check the battery and see where we're at all right dinner is cooked and we are at 67% so 
Not too bad. We went down, what, about, I don't remember how many percent. But that was using the microwave and the toaster oven. Again, anything with heating elements, you're going to suck out battery. But I think we're going to be fine. It is 9.51, and we're going to check our batteries. And you can see here, hopefully it focuses. We're at like 54%. Now, according to the Victron uh, shunt, it says we're good for another 19 hours at our current usage. So we'll see where we're at in the morning. Today has went really well. So I'm going to call it a night and I'll see you all in the morning. Good morning. Well, we made it through the night and let's take a look here. See if we can get this to focus. We are at about 37, 38%. So we made it through the night. Now let's see if we can make it through the morning. We're going to need to make some breakfast, some coffee. Patty's going to need to dry her hair. So have you even noticed that we have not been plugged into shore power since you got home from work yesterday? No, I didn't notice. You had to tell me. Yeah, so you just been living normal, right? Yep. quarter till eight the same exact time that I started this video yesterday so we've made it a full 24 hours now let's be honest I don't think anyone at the start of this video thought that we wouldn't make it 24 hours with 600 amp hours of lithium batteries but you might be shocked by where we're at so I'm gonna go ahead and open up the epoch app and again that's one of the things I love about these batteries is I can Bluetooth directly to the batteries and we are actually down to 25% now remember 25% of 600 amp hours. So that means that we still have approximately 150 amp hours of battery left. Now, the main reason that we are so low is because yesterday I was running the fireplace with the electric heater, but I think that simulates if we had been running an AC in the summer months with that kind of draw. Although I do think the heater probably draws more than even the air conditioner would. But the other thing was we lived our normal life for 24 hours in this RV. We were using the microwave, we were using the toaster oven, we were blow drying hair and making coffee. And so I'm really happy with the performance. And when you consider the fact that we only have about 300 watts of solar currently on the RV, and it is mid-October where, let's face it, we don't get near the sun here in Northeast Indiana in October as we might get in other parts of the country or in the summer months when we get a lot more daylight. So I think if we can go ahead and get the solar capacity doubled up there, we're gonna be fine. I just have to remember that you're still limited with 600 amp hours running things like a electric heater or in the case of summer months running the air conditioner. But overall these Epoch batteries are doing great and we are loving them. Now we're just a month in and I'm gonna be telling the story of these batteries over the next year. In fact, I'm gonna be filming a special video in late December that'll probably air in early January where we're meeting up with our friends from Tree Talker the Traveler. They're gonna be camping with us over the Christmas holiday. They too are running Epoch batteries and so so you're going to get a chance to see what they're running, how it works for them. I hope this at least shows you the power of lithium batteries and the power of those Epoch 300 amp hour batteries that we currently have installed. I think we're going to call this a wrap on this video. And until next time, everybody, we'll see you on down the road. Bye. Travels with Lady. We'll see you on down the road.